Okay, so we're going to do an Adam dry fly. This is a, a fairly old, very traditional pattern. It's It's been around for, well now probably, well not quite a hundred years, but um, it's a pre-World War II pattern. Um, I have been kind of reading and looking at um, uh, Mike Valla's book, Tying Cat Skill Style Dry Flies. And he includes this fly in his book. And um, even though it's not truly a cat skill dry fly, it actually, um, it was developed, um, it was, it's a Michigan fly pattern, and it was uh, it's credited to a guy named Len Halliday, who uh, tied this fly for the, some of the caddis hatches, I believe, um, and, and, um, up on the Boardman River, I think is the Boardman River is where it first started being used, but because of its coloration and other things, it's just kind of quickly became a real standard fly pattern uh, that's being used in a lot of different places. Um, curiously enough, it's one of the very few fly patterns that has its own Wikipedia page. Um, so let's take a look at how to go ahead and tie this pattern. So let me take this fly out and I'll grab a hook here. It's of course tied on a standard dry fly hook. A TMCO, this is a TMCO 100 and it is a size 12. Um, I'm using 8 aught black uh, uni 8 aught thread on it. Um, the 8 aught as opposed to 6 aught gives us just a little bit finer thread. Um, the materials on it, the tail and the the tail and the uh, um, hackle are a mixture of grizzly and brown hackle. Um, and then uh, it uses uh, a grizzly. This is a grizzly winger cape. It's a hen cape. You can see these nice little feathers that are used for the wings on this pattern. Um, and so it's a grizzly tipped wing on it. And then it's a muskrat gray dubbing. This is just some fine natural dubbing. This one happens to be accompanied strictly business. They're not around anymore. But this is pretty much like nature spirit, fine natural dubbing. Uh, trout hunter, um, Renee Harrop's trout hunter. They, this is pretty similar to theirs too. And, and you want to use what's called a muskrat gray. Sometimes you'll see it called Adam's gray. Um, and this stuff, it, it dubs real well. It adjusts real well. And, and so anyway, yeah, so those are, that's the, the, the materials for it. So let's go ahead and let's, uh, let me start my thread here. So we're going to do that jam knot. Oops, there we go. And we'll wind our thread back to my tie-in point. And a tie-in point on a standard dry fly hook is typically, if you drop the thread straight down, you can see I'm a, behind the point, but in front of the um, barb, the point of the barb. And I have debarbed this hook. Normally it's kind of thought of to be about halfway between those two locations. I'm going to advance it forward just a little bit. Okay, so the way I'm going to tail this thing, let me pull. So I've selected a couple of feathers here, one brown one and one grizzly feather. Um, out of uh, my two capes, I went up towards the top. The thing about these two is the barbules on each one are about the same length. Because what I'm going to do, because the, the tail is a mixture, and it's, it's really difficult to pull off a few of the gray, the grizzly, a few of the brown, and kind of mix them together and keep the tips even. So what I do instead is I kind of marry them right together. And you can see I stroke those fibers out, those barbules out, and they come out pretty much together. So I'm going to take this, take a little group of these barbules from both sides, pinch them real tight so they don't move, and pull them off the hook shank. And then I'll kind of gather them together. And let's see, I got a pretty good tail there. Okay, so I'm gonna come in here. My tail, my tail is going to be as long as the shank of my hook. So I'm gonna take 
so you can see right where my fingers are grasping it that's I'm going to slide that back to the tie-in point and drop it right down there and then switch hands and then I'll come in with my thread and I'll grab the little butt sides of those barbules and I'll wrap this back and I'm kind of hold, pulling up and pushing pulling towards me as I do this that keeps that right up on top then I'm going to take the tail lift it up come up underneath like that and wrap that down I've got kind of this one stray barbule that's kind of poking out here all right now in in Mike Vala's book he and some tires I don't know tires do this differently he always puts his wings on first then he puts his tail on then he does his body I like to do the tail body and then put the wing on next so I'm going to the, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a little of my dubbing and again uh, just take about as much as you think you need and then probably almost divide it in half I, you can see this little wisp of dubbing it's not very much so I'm going to put it on my thread just like we did for the soft hackles and I'm going to rotate it on my thread to create this little noodle of dubbing Okay, and when I spin it, I'm spinning it counterclockwise on the thread. Um, but your, from your perspective, it looks clockwise, but it's counterclockwise the way I'm doing it. Then notice what's nice about this. I can slide this up and down the thread. And that's what I want to do. So I'm going to take it and slide it up to the thread. I'm going to come and I'm just going to maybe get a couple winds there. Now I can pull it down and notice how when I grab it now, I can tighten it right up. So let's just kind of keep it tight as I go forward. And I'm going to want to keep a pretty, a pretty um, slim body. You know, I don't want real heavy, thickly dubbed bodies here, especially if you're really trying to tie in the cat skill style. Cat skill style dries tend to be um, very lightly dressed. Okay. So there we go. So now I'm going to take my thread forward into this section, this open section of hook shank right here, and get it about halfway. So now I've picked out these two feathers. So here's these two little hen tips that I've picked out uh, to make my wings from. So let's uh, put this in here. And I'm, what I did is I, I put these together by their tips. So I've got the tip here. I take this this one and I put it, put the tips. I want the tips to be even. So I can kind of adjust here. Get the tips even. And I'm putting them together so that the curve, this one needs to come up. Let's do that again. They're not quite even yet. There we go. So you can see now the two tips are even. So let's uh, let's uh, well, hang on a minute. Let me kind of readjust these. Get to make sure they're even. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to take the wings and. I'm going to lay them back and I want them to go to the back bend of the hook shank. So that's about the length they need to be. Okay. And now I'm going to grasp them. You notice I haven't trimmed the fibers on this. I, with, that's intentional. The fibers will help to hold them and stabilize them as I put them on. And so there we go. They're back there now. Clip the front here. And I'm going to kind of keep them in place here while I wrap. And now I'm going to pull them forward and wrap in behind them. Because make them stand up. Let's get that one. That one's being a little... There 
There we are. Yeah, so there they go. All right. All right, so there are my wings, and they're, they've got a little V to them, which is what I want. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick... I picked these two feathers out and I've measured the barbule length and I'm going to wrap them around the hook shank and I'm going to hackle this fly. And <clears throat> I'm going to tell you when I measure these, I've got a hackle gauge sitting down here where you can bend the feather around it and I'll show you the size to go. Traditional dry flies call for a hackle barbule length that's one and a half times the gape. And what I found often is when I measure them out on a hackle gauge for some reason and this may just be me personally I don't know for some reason I tend to measure them on the too big and, and I think if you're gonna if you're gonna make a mistake with your hackling length I think it's better to make a mistake in making it a little short rather than a little long um, I think the fly sits better in the water and it fishes better and so this one when I actually gauged it I gauged it, I, I kind of looked at the size 14 mark on my cackle gauge rather than the size 12 and I tried to gauge it to about the 14 or maybe just a touch more. Okay, so now let me show you how I prep out the feather. Here's the feather. I'm going to kind of stroke this out. We're just going to clip it right here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of slide my barbules down like this and I'm going to come in and I'm going to clip them on each side. And you see the little brush? It kind of makes a little brush there at the stem. And that little brush really helps me to, it really helps to tie the feather in a little better. A lot of times when you tie just by the stem, it's really easy to slide the stem out. I'm going to do the same thing on this one. We'll cut that. Pull these barbules down and cut just a little brush like that okay so now let's talk about how to mount these on uh, on the hook shank so if you look you can see if you look you can kind of see this side of the feather is a little lighter color the sides a little darker but the feather also kind of has a natural curve to it okay and that curve kind of matches up to the way it lays on the um, cape okay and so what you want to do is you want to take this concave side and when you mount it you mount it to, uh, towards you then when you bring it up and wrap it the concave side should be forward that angles the barbules forward and so what that does that's called dry fly style um, and so what that does this is that's typically the way you you put hackle on a dry fly you want the barbules angled forward if you know they ain't it's not a dramatic thing but they do angle a little bit rather than if i put it the other way and i wrap the feather with the concave side to the rear now the barbules are going to go to the rear and that's called wet fly style so let me put these two feathers together and now here's what i'm going to do with this so i've got these two i got the curves matched I'm going to mount the curve towards me, and I'm going to take these two little stems. I'm going to drop it right down between the wings, and I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to capture it in front of the wings, and then pull my wings forward, and I'm going to capture the feathers behind my wings. I'll get my wings up here where they belong. Okay, a couple wraps. Don't get carried away. And now, got a little sticking out over the eye of the hook there. And now they're in there. And, and the, with that little brush, that just tends to make them, because it you can't I can't tell you how many times I'll hit this point, I'll put the hackle pliers on, go to wind it, and the feather pops out. And that's because of the stem. I think if you do the little brush technique I showed you, they tend to be a little sturdy. So let's see what we can do here. So we're going to get this going. And there we go. So I've got the concave side. I can see that lighter colored side facing forward here. Pull my wing up here. Okay. My wing's wanting to kind of drop down there. We're going to wrap for it. I'm going to try to get three or four wraps behind the hook shank here. 
Okay. Oh, my wing is getting really pulled down. Let's pull that back up. Let's see what's going on there. There we go. Now let's go ahead and let's pull the wings back and let's get a couple wraps here in front. And you want to leave yourself about, don't crowd too much. You want to have an eye that's about, the head of the fly should be about the same size as the diameter of the hook, the um, eye of the hook. So now let's go ahead and let's wrap this one. Do the same with this. We'll work our way through. My wings are kind of getting pushed around there a little bit, but we'll be able to get them back up in shape here in a minute. So we'll do a couple wraps around. Come around to the front. So about two wraps, two to three wraps in the front and the back. And, and it depends on the water you're fishing. A lighter hackle for slower water, heavier hackle for faster water. Now I'm going to clip out each of these feathers. And I've got enough feather to do another fly with. Okay. So now let's get my wings up here. Let's, uh, let's come in here and I'm just going to pull everything back for a moment. Get it all back out of the way here. Get all the barbules out of the way. Come in. Wrap. Wrap a little head there. Take my whip finish tool and whip finish it. And I like to come in with my fingernails and make sure that thread seats right in behind the eye. And now stand my wings up where they need to be. There we go. Yeah, I think that that will do the trick. I think that'll catch some fish. So there you can see it. Let me go ahead and give you a front profile of it. You can see the wings. Um, so there is the Adams dry fly. Um, let me come in here. I'm gonna I got a couple of fibers here I'll snip out that are kind of going towards the back. Clean it up just a little bit. Although I'm going to tell you right now, uh, the fish absolutely don't care whether I snip those fibers out of there or not. Um, anyway, there's a Adams dry fly. It's a classic, um, classic Adams dry. It's uh, like I said, Mike Valla has it in his uh, tying Catskill dry book, even though it's not really part of this, that school of flies. It's Catskill flies but um, it's just a great standard dry and there's a lot of variations to it.